This is Lodge Cast Iron. We're the only place in the country that still makes cast iron cookware, and we've been at it for over 114 years. Unlike other cookware, cast iron only gets better with age. But before you start cooking, we've got a lot of hard work to do. The main elements in cast iron cookware are iron, carbon, and silicon, mostly derived from three things. First, we have pig iron. Pig iron is the product of the smelting of iron ore. Our next ingredient is recycled scrap steel from other manufacturing processes. Our last ingredient is recycled cast iron. Any cast iron that doesn't make it into one of our skillets, well, it returns here to be used again. These raw materials are weighed according to a specific recipe to obtain a 2,000 pound chart. The materials are weighed into a 600 degree preheater. This preheater removes any oil or water that may be on the material. This is an electric induction furnace. The furnace runs at 2,800 degrees Fahrenheit and can hold up to four tons of molten metal. It takes 15 minutes to melt all the 2,000 pound charge into a super hot liquid metal. It's at this point we take a sample. And depending on the spectrometer results of this sample, workers will add measured amounts of alloys to the iron bath. This is to give our finished pan the specific chemistry to meet our quality standards. When the iron bath achieves the desired temperature and composition, 2,000 pounds of molten cast iron are tapped into a transfer ladle. We're almost ready for the molds, but first, since the iron contains impurities, we've got one more important step before molding. We add a product called vermiculite. Vermiculite is a binding agent that holds together all the oxides, or slag, that form in our metal mixture. This slag forms when our 2,000 pound mixture meets oxygen. We then slag the metal to get rid of any impurities in our molten cast iron. We are slagging one last time to make sure our cast iron has no impurities before it proceeds to the molding process.
This is our pattern shop. In this room, we select from a variety of patterns to make our skillets. Here, we see our employee inserting a new pattern into the D-Somatic. This machine makes our sand molds. It makes two halves of the same pattern. When these two halves come together, we will pour our mixture down in between. Depending on the pattern, this machine can produce 400 to 1600 pieces an hour. Lodge uses sand molds, an ancient technology. Sand molding remains the best and most practical way to cast iron. Our molten iron is so hot it would melt almost any other material, but the sand can hold its own against the heat. This is how it works. Compressed air forces moist sand into a pattern that is squeezed at 700 to 1,000 pounds per square inch to form the exact contour of our skillet. Exact reverse impressions of both sides of the pan are formed in the cavity in the sand. Molten iron fills the cavity, creating your skillet. In pouring our molds, the liquid metal must be between 2,480 and 2,520 degrees. This temperature produces the best finish for the casting. The cookware moves along a vibrating conveyor belt for about 40 minutes to shake off the molding sand. The sand is captured, cooled, and recycled. From here, our cookware begins its cleaning process. The first step is a rotating drum. In the rotating drum, the pans are tumbled in a bed of iron media, which removes much of the remaining molding sand. Next, we blast the cookware to remove any remaining residual molding sand. This is done with a fine steel shot that is blasted on the pan to remove the sand. Shot blasting is a very effective way to remove the sand, and efficient because the steel shot gets recycled, so there is no real waste. This is what the pans look like when they come out of the machine. Grinding removes any sharp edges or burrs and ensures a smooth surface before the final step in the cleaning process. Here the pots and pans swirl in a bath of steel media along with soap and water for a power scrubbing that enhances the surface finish. At the end of this step, our cast iron is hung out to dry, ensuring that it's ready for the next process that sets them apart. The critical step in making large cast iron is seasoning. Vegetable oil is applied with electrostatic spray guns that create a uniform coating with charged oil particles. The positively charged oil atoms bond with the negatively charged iron atoms in the pan, creating a barrier between your food and your pan without the need for a synthetic surface. 
The result is a natural non-stick surface that continues to get better with time and use. From here, the skillets travel to an oven where they are baked at a high temperature. This transforms the oil into the black patina that gives your lodge skillet its distinctive look. What started out as raw materials and then became molten metal is now nice and cool and ready to be shipped to your kitchen, where it will last for generations. Lodge, an American classic.